Ah, crap, I broke it. Hey folks, in this video I'm going to show you how to replace the ABS DSC unit, or at least most of it, without having to bleed the brakes. Before we start the repair, let me give you some backstory on this car, because it's relevant to the ABS repair. When I bought the BMW, it was in really bad shape, and one of the problems was a non-functional ABS DSC unit. You can see in this video, the instrument cluster has the trifecta of warning lights, which is caused by a faulty DSC unit. At the time, I wasn't sure how to fix it. I didn't have any of the diagnostic software like BMW Standard Tools or BMW Scanner. And at that point, I hadn't found the 50s Kid YouTube channel yet. So the ABS and DSC were non-functional for quite some time. But finally, I think I can fix it. I bought an ABS DSC unit from somebody on eBay, and my laptop now has the diagnostic software on it. I also watched the ABS DSC replacement video from the 50s kid. Actually, I'm going to put a link to that video up in the corner, because it's pretty good. But I'm going to do things a little different. I'm going to replace the controller and the pump motor without disturbing the hydraulics, so I shouldn't need to bleed the brakes. That said, if you need to fix your ABS unit, you should perform diagnostic tests to see what's wrong. If the problem is related to the pump motor or the electronics, then this video should help you. But if the valves in the hydraulic system are faulty, then you'll need to disconnect the hydraulics and, of course, bleed the brakes. If that's the case, then I think you'd be better off watching the 50s kid video, because he covers that in his video. Okay, let's take a look at the new ABS DSC unit, or at least it's new to me. It came from a 2004 E46 sedan. The unit has three different parts. The electronic controller, which is on the left here, the hydraulic block, which is in the middle, and the pump motor, which is on the right. On closer inspection, I found the three parts are held together with just two screws. Both their screws are Torx T25. After removing the two screws, the three pieces just pull apart. Although you need to be careful not to damage the two little prongs on this part that sticks out of the controller. That piece goes through a hole in the hydraulic block into the electric motor. Those two little prongs provide power to the electric motor. So if they get damaged, the ABS pump won't work. So the idea is to swap out the controller and the electric motor while leaving the hydraulic block in place. Of course, that means I need to separate the controller and the motor from the unit in my car, and the space in there is pretty tight. To get at the ABS unit, I need to remove a bunch of things that are in the way. For example, the cabin filter housing and this removable panel need to come out. I'm sure you know how to do this by now, so I won't bore you with it. I did that stuff off camera. But now we have access to the ABS DSC unit, and the first thing I'm going to do is unplug that big electrical connector. It has a handle on top, you just pull it up. Mine was a little difficult, so I had to fiddle with it. This is actually the second take to make it look better on camera. Now I'm going to detach the brake master cylinder from the brake booster. It has two 13mm nuts. Here it helps to have a ratcheting spanner because it's a pretty tight space. It's also a good idea to disconnect the electrical plugs from the master cylinder. There's one on top and two on the side near the hydraulic connections. Then we can pull the master cylinder loose from the brake booster. The ABS unit has only one mounting bolt. It's this one way down there on top of the frame rail. 
It takes a 10 millimeter socket and a long socket extension. A magnet makes it a lot easier to remove and install that bolt. Now we need to move the ABS unit and the master cylinder over to the side to get access to those two screws that hold the ABS unit together. I ended up detaching some of the ECU wiring and moving it out of the way to make room. But here you can see the two screws we need to remove. Here's the top one, and here's the bottom one. Once again, they both take a Torx T25 socket. Okay, fast forward a little bit, and I'm using a block of wood to hold the ABS unit while I finagle the wrench in there. There was just barely enough room to get the wrench on the bottom bolt. That bolt is also pretty long, so you need the room to get that bolt out of there. With those bolts removed, we can separate the three pieces of the ABS DSC unit. First, I'm going to pull out the pump motor. Then I need to move the ABS unit and the master cylinder over to the other side so I can remove the controller. Remember those two little prongs I was talking about? Here you can see they got damaged while I was removing the controller. I got a little careless. I need to be super careful not to damage those prongs on the new one when I install it. At this point, I should be able to install the new parts. But before I do that, I'm going to take this opportunity to vacuum out all the leaves and crap that accumulated under the ABS unit. With all that stuff out of the way, we can see the mounting bracket for the ABS unit. This part of the mounting bracket has two pins that fit into holes in the frame rail. There aren't any bolts or anything, so if you pull up on the ABS unit, it'll come free from the frame rail. And Freddy sells french fries on the freeway. Anyway, you might need to pull it loose to get enough room to install the controller without damaging it. Speaking of which, I installed the controller next. I did that off camera because I didn't want to be distracted by trying to film and work at the same time. But here you can see the controller fitted into place. And you can see those two prongs sticking out the side. Once again, be super careful not to damage those because they provide power to the pump motor. Before installing the pump motor, I decided to put some dielectric grease on the electrical contacts. This is where those two little prongs plug into. So when you install the motor, you need to be sure it's oriented correctly so those prongs will plug into it. Once again, I did that off camera to avoid distraction. But here you can see the new pump motor installed. I couldn't find a torque spec for those two screws, so I just made them snug. They're pretty small and they go into a brass insert into the plastic housing, so don't ape on them. Fast forward a little bit and we have most everything installed. All we have left to do at this point is reinstall the ECU cover, reconnect the vacuum hose for the brake booster, and reinstall those trim pieces. Fast forward a little bit more and everything is reinstalled. We successfully replaced the ABS controller and the pump motor without disturbing the hydraulic system, so the brakes don't need to be bled. However, we do need to do some coating to make the electronical bits play nicey nice with each other. The 50s kid covers that in his video, and he did a great job of it. I don't think there's anything I can add to that. But here's a side note. The instrument cluster in my car is not the original one. The original instrument cluster died, so I had to replace it. And that complicates things because the new instrument cluster has a different VIN number coded into it. And unfortunately, it cannot be reprogrammed. That said, I was able to get rid of most of the ABS system faults. Previously, there were a total of five ABS faults, but after replacing the ABS unit and doing some coding, we're down to one fault. And I think that's because of the mismatched instrument cluster.
Unfortunately, I think the DSC will still be non-functional because of that fault. And we still have the two yellow warning lights on the dash. But we should at least have working ABS now. And that was my main goal. That is also where we're going to end the video. But if you're doing this repair on your car, you should have working ABS and DSC at this point, assuming the instrument cluster has the correct VIN number in it. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time.